The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it is important to know what is going on in the last day and age and that we don't fall prey into the devil's system and that we be ignorant. So you got to keep looking at the t signs of the times around us. That way you can see and know what Satan is doing to bring in his new world order kingdom and that Christians don't fall gullible into its uh, traps. Now, in Revelation chapter 6, we know from the first seal who this person is. Let us look at Revelation chapter 6, his demonic majesty at verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. That is not Jesus Christ. There are so many people who think that this person is Jesus Christ, but that's what Satan wants. He wants to, people to confuse his man with God's man. He wants them all to think that they're all one and the same. So, uh, uh, did I say, what, what chapter did I say? Four, okay, thank you so much. All right, so it's chapter six. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. <laughs> Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. All right, anyway, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, is about his demonic majesty, the Antichrist. And he's going forth to conquering and to conquer. So I do not draw pictures really well, so just bear with me right over here. But then this majesty that you're going to see right here, who's going forth to conquering and to conquer, is actually the Pope. That's what you've got to understand. So he is known to be the Pope. The Pope right here, he is going to be that man of sin, the Antichrist. And what you're going to notice is that he has something like a bow right here. Now, if you notice that in his stick, what you're going to notice is that it's kind of like a bowed shape of his crucifix right here. And the Pope, as he comes forth conquering and to conquer, what must be understood is that if you are to pay attention not just to the nation of Israel, but if you are to pay attention to what's going on in the Vatican, you'd be realizing, man, we're almost right there. Right. So have you been noticing what's been going on at the Vatican? Do you know what has been going on at the Vatican? So then Pope Francis definitely made a big name for himself. I mean, it's like every pope that is more and more recent, it's like it's bringing in the tribulation even closer. People thought that Pope John Paul, man, there was a lot of things that changed in our modern times where it's bringing in the new world order. But Pope Francis did it even more. And then if Pope Francis is not the Antichrist, then the next pope, you can bet your socks that this is going to be even more close, a lot of things. Every recent pope that comes by, it seems like we're getting closer and closer to the Antichrist, closer and closer to our calling of home, to go up home with Jesus Christ. But Pope Francis, here are some several highlights, which is pretty interesting about him. Now, first of all, I want to mention about this interesting prophecy from a Catholic, I believe he was an archbishop, Malachi. So it was a famous thing back at Ireland. So if you go to Ireland, there's this uh, famous saying going around. And you got to realize this. Satan, you've got to understand this too. Satan, he is not all-knowing like God, but trust me, he knows more of the future than you do. And Satan, he can see some things happening and he can see when the tribulation is coming closer, when that man of sin is coming closer, when the rapture is coming closer. So this is very interesting. What Malachi, he gave some sort of prophecy that by this number of the Pope, I believe, was it the 112th? That's the finalized one. By the 112th Pope, that at that time, then the end of the world would come in. So then he's the 112th. So once you reach over here, then you just reach that uh, lucky number, 13, yeah, then yeah, I guess that's the end of the world, right? <laughs> oh, 
But uh, which is very interesting, Revelation chapter 13, right? Which is pretty interesting about the Antichrist, but um, that, that, that's just food for thought, okay? So anyways, right here, that's some kind of interesting prophecy that Malachi gave right here. But what's so interesting concerning this is that obviously this is not the final authority. The Bible is our final authority. However, you also got to keep in mind that Satan, that he's not a dummy himself either. So what's important is that you always go by the scripture as a final authority and everything else, you just take it as a grain of salt. That's it. That's the best advice I, I can give to you. Okay, so concerning Pope Francis right here, concerning this prophecy, it makes you wonder that how close we are. Because some of the things that you notice from Pope Francis' life is that he was the one that was responsible in trying to sign this agreement with Islam. And then he made this kind of covenant about bringing humanitarian peace, working with humanitarian peace upon the earth. And then it is said that he was practically that first pope to enter that kind of Arabian uh, region over there and to set foot and to start some sort of covenant, that kind of dramatic step, which is pretty interesting concerning Pope Francis right here. Not only that, he's also the one that's trying to bring in the New World Order, uh, New World Order system and all sorts of religions around the world come and meet this person. As a matter of fact, they have some sort of uh, Jewish synagogue that was starting up in this Arabian region. And then the Pope was involved as well as the Muslims. They were all involved over there. So then it seems pretty interesting, if you know your Bible, the top three religions that Satan is going to use is Catholicism, Islam, and Judaism. And by the way, these are the world's largest three religions, actually. So remember, if you know in your previous Bible study right here, the Antichrist, according to the book of Daniel, chapter 11, he's a Syrian Jew. You can meet the qualification right here. Concerning Catholicism, he will take this as the Pope. And if you look at previous centuries of church history, all the famous Christian leaders knew who the Antichrist was, the man of sin. And they all pointed out that it was his devilish majesty, the Pope right here. So it, we are hitting in really close times. Now, as this Pope comes in, what is pretty interesting right here is that you'll notice that all of a sudden there's a noise of thunder. And then verse 2, he just comes out of nowhere. So, this is a pretty interesting story that Dr. Upman gives in his ad lib commentary. In St. Peter's Cathedral, all of a sudden there was this flying saucer do -do 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 -do, landed on St. Peter's Square. And all of a sudden came out this 13 foot tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, holding out two little fingers and saying, Peace be unto you, I have come again. <laughs> Now, the thing is, is that you'd be surprised how much of that could be true because you'll notice that what's interesting about chapter 6, verse 1 through 2, there's like a thunderous noise out of nowhere, and then he comes out of nowhere, this Antichrist, which is pretty interesting, especially if you look at, if you notice a lot of movies, that's where UFOs come from. There's some kind of noise, and then all of a sudden they come out of nowhere. Uh, you'd be surprised how much of, uh, you know, there's a saying that truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. You'd be surprised about that. But here's another interesting thing. What we do know for a fact is that the Antichrist, that he's going to take a play with Revelation chapter 17 and 18. There is no doubt, as you look at Revelation 17 and 18, the Antichrist is going to have a big play with the Vatican over here, Rome. So with Rome right over here, you notice how a lot of decorations concerning uh, the obelisk and the buildings and all that's pretty similar to what we have at Washington, D.C., but I'm just going to say that, just food for thought, you know, yeah. just food for thought, yeah. A lot of Masonic symbols that you find out in American buildings and the Vatican, just food for thought, food for thought. Yep. But anyways, what you're going to notice right here is that the Vatican is definitely going to be one of the headquarters and the main cities that the Antichrist is going to use. 
there's an interesting thought, what they say, which I'm, before I mention it, the Antichrist, we do know where he's going to try to be in. You know where he's going to try to be in? In Jerusalem. That's the city where he's going to go. And what is extremely interesting as you go to Jerusalem is that uh, there, you already have the three big religions over there. You have Catholicism, Islam, and Judaism already over there. So it's already set up. What's also interesting is that you'll, you'll notice Masonic symbols, obelisk-shaped things in Jerusalem area as well. So it's already setting things up. You already have things already set up. But in Jerusalem, that is where the man of sin is going to be at. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, right? Now, here's something interesting, is that the standard belief of Christianity is that there are seven years of tribulation. So, in this seven-year period of the tribulation, if we're going to go by the standard term, the Bible says that in the middle of it, that's when the man of sin comes down to Jerusalem. So, let's put this as the early. So, that's the first ones, and this is the later, latter three and a half. Then where is he going to go at the early ones? Uh -huh. Well, what is pretty interesting is that there are some Bible believers who, who believe that he might come down at Rome at the first three and a half. And that's pretty interesting when Dr. Upman says that the Antichrist the UFO is in, it lands on where? St. Peter's. Yes, that's pretty interesting why he would do that. But I uh, Chick Publications, so they believe that the Rome will be the first three and a half, actually. And then Dr. Ruckman, he kind of indicated it, whether he was serious or not. But a lot of times when he gives these stories and ad-lib stuff, it's like sometimes he's just speaking where there's a lot of gems of wisdom where it's too fast and you got to rewind. You got to say, were you being serious right here? Wait, slow down. Were you <laughs> like that? So it may be that he'll be here at the first three and a half. And then the latter three and a half, he's going to move right over here. And you got to realize this. What did Rome, ever since the early centuries, what city, what city did they always want to have and claim? They always wanted Jerusalem. Muslims and the Catholic Church, that's why they had that awful, bloody crusades going on. Because of this city right here, Jerusalem. God's capital over here. Okay, so you'll notice right here that this is an interesting play what's going on. And if you pay attention to the Vatican, what's going on, it may be really interesting. Now, some people believe that the Pope is the false prophet, and then the Jesuit general, a.k.a. known as the Black Pope, is the Antichrist. Now, you might say, what in the world is that? So, in case some of you don't know this, the official Pope that we know is known as the White Pope. The one who is known as the Jesuit general is known as the Black Pope. This is founded at Chick Publication Comics, which you probably didn't know about. Now, when you dig into elites, conspiracies, you know, the small bankers, the small elites who are in charge, who are running the whole world's empire, is it the Rothschilds and etc. But what you're going to find out is, is, that, is that you will see Jesuits involved in nearly any conspiracy that you're going to talk about in any political party. World War II, you got to realize the Nazis, they were under a Jesuit general. They, there were Jesuits involved. You're going to see communist leaders who had also ties with Jesuits. This included uh, Fidel Castro and some subtle indications with Stalin, which is interesting, even though Eastern Orthodox was the one that triumphed after that. But then there are also conspiracies where the Eastern Orthodox was uh, in cahoots with the Jesuit general, but then they turned against them, So, which is very interesting, which shows an interesting picture about rogue nations that I talked to you about, about Russia and the Muslim nations. And then the Eastern Orthodox Church is mainly the dominant religion in Russia. So there's a lot of interesting connections right there. But uh, let's just throw that out. That's just food for thought, okay? That's just food for thought. But then we see the white pope and the black pope. Now, this is what, now this is just my personal opinion, all right? So I'm going to give you my personal belief who I believe the Antichrist is. Who I believe the Antichrist is is what always church history has pointed out. 
and early Bible believers have pointed out. Uh, now that we got, uh, we gotten more recent generation of Bible believers, some of them are thinking that he's more of the false prophet. But me, I believe that the Pope is the Antichrist. And what Dr. Upman pointed out and the early Re Reformation leaders and the Great Awakening Revival preachers have pointed out, I believe that the Pope is the Antichrist. But what about that black Pope? It's not a problem because I, I understand why the Pope cannot be the Antichrist because he has to be a political figure, more political than religious. But you got to realize this is that the Antichrist, he has to be the God that's worshipped. So what I believe is this, is that why not mingle the two together? It has to be a totally unique pope. Yeah. And by the way, if you look at this pope, wasn't he a very unique person where you had a Jesuit yeah. who became the pope? Yeah. That's, pretty interesting. that's pretty interesting, right? Yeah. That's pretty interesting right there. So that's why I think right here, why is this not possible? By the way, Rome itself, it's not just a completely religious city. There is no doubt it is a secular political power as well. By the way, it's the only city that you can ever think about in the Bible, in Revelation 17 and 18, that's religion and state combined. It's a, it's a religion that has a lot of state power freedom and military freedom. Look at the Knights of Malta, for example, and all the other religious orders. It is the religious order, the number one religious order, and probably the only religious order that has such a political freedom. As a matter of fact, a lot of the American government laws today concerning about taxation and funding and all that, they're focusing more on priests. Yeah. Priests are the ones that get the special benefits, actually. Yeah. Some of you didn't know that, right? So, a lot. Of, uh, truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. Yeah. Truth is stranger than fiction. So, I believe this. I don't believe that it has to be someone current like right now. I believe that it's going to have to be someone like totally unique. It's going to have to be like a totally unique pope where he's going to have religious and political power. But guess what? We're already seeing things set up. You see a Jesuit who became a pope. By the way, the black pope already has, uh, is the number one secular, uh, already the top of the pyramid with a lot of powers. So a lot of people think that the presidents are run by the bankers or the Jewish elites, but then you're going to see Jesuits always on top everywhere. So you already got the secular power. And then you got the religious power right here with the white pope. You just combine the two together. You just combine the two together. So this is just pay attention to Rome, and then you'll see how close we are. The locations that you, the two locations that you're going to look at to see how close we are is Jerusalem and Rome. When you look at these two cities, you're going to see, man, we're so close, Heavenly Father. Uh, so just to go off of the Catholic monk's prophecy, mm -hmm. so the 112 mottos that he wrote, mm -hmm. the 111th one was, uh, a lot of people say it was referencing Benedict XVI, which is yeah. mm -hmm. the last pope. Mm -hmm. yeah. And his last thing he wrote, the 112, mm -hmm. says, Peter the Roman, who will pastor his sheep in many tribulations, and when these things are finished, the city of seven hills will be destroyed and the dreadful judge will judge his people. So that kind of goes into what you're saying about mm. the first three and a half mm -hmm. in Rome. Uh -huh. and then like the second three and a half right here where that judgment's coming down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some actually teach that because the Vatican gets burned down at the first three and a half that he moves to Jerusalem actually. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, wow. yeah, so which is interesting. But me, I feel like that her judgment is at a latter year. That's what I feel like. So that's why I didn't teach that part. Yeah, because I believe more that it's going to happen at the latter judgment right here. Yeah. Because at the middle of the seven years, that's when severe persecution kicks in. Oh, yeah. And then Revelation 17, 18 shows the blood of the martyrs. That's going on that time, actually. Oh, wow. So I believe it's a little later on. Yeah. But... What's so interesting is this. It also shows the Antichrist is done with the Vatican. Uh -huh. yeah. The Bible says, Revelation 18 and 17, that they betray the Vatican. Yeah. Why? They don't need her anymore. That's right. Why? I got Jerusalem already. And Satan thinks that he won. And then Israel tries to band up together, according to the book of Zechariah, where they arm themselves. And then Satan's like, I won. I got it. So, Vatican, you served me for the past 2,000 years, but you know what? I'm done with you. 
That's betrayal. It's satanic elites have always lived by betrayal. You look at conspiracies, they always betray each other. Why? Because Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus Christ. It is a satanic uh, influence and thing to always be betray each other. And Satan, he will betray the whore of revelation. And then Satan thought that he won. And then guess what happens? Jesus Christ comes down and, all, and you don't have to do a thing. Jesus Christ just comes down and through the word of his mouth, and then just wipes them all out. Amen. There goes your 2,000 years of building history, elites. Yeah. All right.